anti-aging and you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, you have a choice to make right now. Do you want to look your very best right now, but later deal with lumps and bumps and heavier jowls, droopy eyelids, or option number two, you make good choices about preventative measures, skincare procedures that you'd opt for, and what you inject into your body because all that stuff can come back to haunt you later in life. So in this video, we're going to focus on prevention so that when you are much older, maybe my age or more, you actually can get those compliments and look 20 years younger. If you opted for number two, you are in the right place. If you opted for option number one, you need to call your dermatologist and schedule that procedure. Just kidding. <laughs> But really, when you get Botox or fillers early in life, a lot of them can turn back against you. So let's talk about hyaluronic acid specifically because I've been seeing this so much with many of my clients that come to me recently with puffiness, with fillers kind of looking off uh, after a few years of having them. Um, and that's because hyaluronic acid is a humectant. Uh, it can work for you or against you depending on how to use it. And so this entire video is dedicated to hyaluronic acid and definitely let's not inject it because again, saying that it's a humectant, it's gonna attract that water. So initially you're attracting water, you're plumping that skin, but down the road, you're gonna have that water retention, you can get those puffy eyes, and then just really, you know, lumps and bumps everywhere. One thing I want to make clear, wrinkles do not make you look older. This woman right here is young with wrinkles, and this woman is old without wrinkles. So what truly makes you look older or younger is the quality of your skin. It's how plump, how elastic it is, how much sagging you have. So those things you have control over and you can minimize them and prevent them to a great degree. So you have my permission to stop obsessing over those nasal labial folds and trying to get them filled with hyaluronic acid because I've seen too many bad cases and we're supposed to have those dynamic lines. And so it's okay to have some as we age. We need to fight a completely different battle and not fall into all the hypes with all the injections. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Nadia Benchakroon, founder of Functional Beauty Principles, which are guided by functional medicine, looking into the root cause rather than just slapping those band-aids and quick fixes on, they don't last long. I am also the founder of thebeautydoctrine.com. It's a platform, it's a website where you can find courses, guides, a curation of the cleanest and most skin compatible products that I'm able to find based on my 28 years expertise in the beauty industry. Let's get started talking about this phenomenal molecule, hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a phenomenal molecule. It's a humectant, and a humectant means it just has the ability to hold and retain water, but it doesn't just do that. It retains that water and it starts inflating. It starts making those cells fuller, plumper from the inside out and giving you that plumper appearance to your skin. It can happen in as short of a time as 30 minutes. So you apply really great hyaluronic acid serum, you can see that minimization of the wrinkles pretty instantaneously. Also, hyaluronic acid is found naturally in our bodies with the highest concentration in our skin, eyes, and connective tissues. It can be consumed, stimulated, applied topically, or injected. Not a fan of injections, as you probably have surmised by now, but let's talk about the rest of them. Part of the aging process, when we get really old, we become brittle, we're dry. All of our systems, our body is really dry. We literally age because we're getting drier. So it's so important to maintain and retain that hydration not talking moisture. Moisture corresponds to oils. So that's moisturization when you're talking about an actual moisturizer or an oil-based serum versus hydration pertains to water. Your cells can hold on to water longer when there is enough hydronic acid. 
but not too much. Some people that actually overdo hyaluronic acid supplementation can start having issues with edema and water retention. So everything in balance. At birth, we have the highest level of hyaluronic acid. That's why those babies always look really hydrated and plump. They don't need interventions as we do as we continue to age. And by the time we're in our early to mid thirties, we start having that tired look. We start getting that first fine line or even a wrinkle. And that is because not only of the breakdown of collagen, but also the decline in hyaluronic acid. If not addressed, those wrinkles and fine lines can become permanent. And this is how, just knowing this, I've been able to reverse lines and wrinkles. I see them, um, you know, as a result of sometimes stress or even just dehydration, just being busy with life and not quite taking care of my skin. I start noticing lines and wrinkles and then I turn it around pretty quickly once I start paying attention to both my hydration, moisture, and collagen. So you really need to do those in balance all the time. And hyaluronic acid, of course, has a huge impact on that wrinkle reversal process. If you want to learn about the rest of the methods that I use to reverse wrinkles, I have other videos about that, but let's just keep talking about hyaluronic acid in this video. Now, hormonal changes, you know, that hormonal decline in our late 40s, 50s, and beyond contributes greatly to the decline of hyaluronic acid. That's why we see that rapid aging in most people, unless of course you catch it, you understand it, and you are preventing that loss. So let's start by talking about the right hyaluronic acid in skincare formulations that you would apply topically. If you're familiar with the Beauty Doctrine method, you would know that I always recommend gentle cleansing followed by a mineral mist and then a hyaluronic acid serum that's water-based they have to be together. So mineral mist, hyaluronic acid applied at the same times. So I don't actually care what order. So you can mist generously with a mist and then apply your hyaluronic acid or vice versa, as long as they go on the skin around the same time. This allows for hyaluronic acid to actually absorb into the skin and draw that water with it. So when they're together inside the cell, they can plump it from the inside out. There's just one issue there. A lot of water evaporates much faster than our skin can absorb. That's why it's so important to follow those immediately with an oil-based serum because that will seal the hydration in and prevent that water, that mineral water from evaporating. If you do this correctly, you will lock that hyaluronic acid in water into your skin, allowing that plumpness to happen from the inside out. So let's talk about how to select a good hyaluronic acid serum. Aside from making sure that it's free from potential carcinogens and irritants and all those things, you can find all that criteria in the resource section on my website, or let me know if you want it here in the comments. I can plug that in, I can give you a link. Um, so those are just the basics. We want products that are gonna be healthy. They're not adding additional toxins to the skin and no fragrance. It's Especially, this is the one thing that I would ask uh, because fragrance can really do a lot of damage to our hormones. Now, as far as hyaluronic acid texture, so really that's what I look for when I'm testing a hyaluronic acid product is whether it's tacky or not. That makes all the difference in the world. If it's tacky and sticky, it's not going to absorb. It might give you that kind of surface. It might act like a primer, basically. It's gonna hold maybe your foundation onto the skin because you have that layer uh, that everything will stick to, but it's not gonna go in and actually do very much for the skin. And so when you're selecting a hyaluronic acid serum, go with texture. I usually go for very lightweight, obviously water-based, serums i have a few on my website you can check out Airpress. there is blur serum by luna nectar there is um great informant serum it's got some hyaluronic acid uh, in it and a bunch of other serums you can literally just go on the beautydoctrine.com put hyaluronic acid in the search bar and then anything that's on the website that has that molecule is going to come up and i forgot one of the best ones actually it's Agent Natur Holy Water. That's actually the lightest formula I could ever find because it's a water. So it's already going to give you both of those molecules that you need. You need water and hyaluronic acid in a formula that's able to absorb 
that is holy water. I tested the ordinary, a lot of people like for hyaluronic acid or you know most of their skincare to be really on the affordable side but sometimes I think in this case uh, you really are not getting good results. I like a good deal as well but the ordinary did not work for my skin and it was tackier. I felt like it was not absorbing plus it gave me a reaction so it's not one that I would recommend Although I'm always on the hunt for something that's affordable because, you know, mood skincare, it does add up. But in certain cases, it is worth it to spend a little bit more on a product that's going to be clean, skin compatible, and actually do the work for your skin. And again, don't forget to follow it immediately with an oil-based serum or a richer moisturizer to seal that water and hyaluronic acid and allow them time to actually penetrate and work for your skin. The second thing that I look for when I'm assessing a formula with hyaluronic acid is what type of preservatives are they using? There are a lot of uh, drying alcohols in water-based formulas because obviously we need alcohol to preserve the formula so mold doesn't grow in the water. However, there are so many different types of alcohols, one that are very drying and one that can be a little bit more forgiving and even in some cases moisturizing. I have a blog that's dedicated to that. I will make sure to list it in the description below so you can have that as a guideline when you're trying to assess which uh, hyaluronic acid formula you want to buy. And this is truly an important factor because if we're trying to hydrate the skin to keep it youthful, we want to minimize the use of drying ingredients such as alcohol that will speed up that aging process. Not to mention that alcohol starts breaking up that lipid barrier, that protective layer of fat that protects our skin, makes it more resilient, more youthful, and more able to resist environmental aggressors, sun damage, and so on and so forth. So really pay attention to what type of preservatives go into the skincare products that you're using. This leads me to one thing actually. I posted a video recently about Korean skincare and that's one of my least favorite things is the fact that there's this culture of you know driving people to use lots and lots of layers of um, moisturizers and hydrators and essences and all of these but forgetting that all of these combined have layers upon layers of alcohol as well so it's really not that great it can be really good for that instant gratification because you're noticing that instant plumpness because you've applied so much water and so much hyaluronic acid but over time you're actually chipping away at that lipid barrier and dehydrating and drying up your skin so you don't need a ton of different essences you just need a really good mist and a really good hyaluronic acid that are able to go deep into the skin and stop plumping for the instant from the inside out. That's really it, at least from the hydration perspective. And then you can get to a moisture. You can use a good oil serum and then an occlusive to finish off your skincare. Now we can't be applying functional beauty principles if we don't talk about diet. There are several ways that you can optimize your hyaluronic acid production. Yes, you can trigger more production of hyaluronic acid just by incorporating certain foods in your diet. The very first one that comes to mind is bone broth. Uh, the combination of the water with the collagen drives that production of both collagen and hyaluronic acid. The second group of foods that really trigger that production of hyaluronic acid are greens. So load up on good organic greens. And let's be realistic, in our modern world, it's really difficult to get the diet right. So that's where supplementation comes in handy. Uh, so hyaluronic acid is one of those things that I would urge everyone to look into if they're not uh, boosting their hyaluronic acid uh, enough or they're not really good with topical application. Plus, I mean, when you take it internally, it's helping all of your organs and bones and connective tissues, not just the face. If you incorporate a good hyaluronic acid supplement, I feel that would be really, really helpful. Uh, 200 milligrams per day are plenty. You don't want to overdo it again because you can be causing water retention issues and that's no fun.
I hope that you learned something new today and then this video was of value to you. If that's the case, please subscribe, share it with somebody you care about and we'll keep it short and sweet. Until next time, be well, be safe, be beautiful. Take care.